Yeah. Because are, are pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> True. So, I mean, it's interesting because he actually, you know, he went from being this sort of mindless drone to end up caring about what happens to them, you know, about them, the Borg coming and hurting everybody or doing, you know, coming after them and and actually having sort of a conscience and ca- being caring and having feelings. Hugh's been through a lot in these last couple of days. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Hugh says he wants to stay with Jordy if that's his choice, mm-hmm. but he chooses to be self-sacrificing mm-hmm. and return to the Borg so that Jordy and everybody else won't be hunted down and assimilated. I mean, to me, that's the greatest mark of humanity that yeah. Hugh has shown. The fact that he's willing to sacrifice himself for no other reason than it would be for the greater good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not a common quality to have. You know, we see that because everybody else was just, don't take on this Borg except for Beverly in the beginning. Now you have a Borg who is showing more humanity than most of the crew did to him when he showed up. Yeah. Yeah, he shows the classic Star Trek trait, you know, the the, the need of the many outweigh the need Mm -hmm. of the few. Yeah. Yeah. Which comes up a lot in the original Trek and the movies. (laughs) And they, they just, sure. and that pops up again. Like, well, if I sacrifice myself, if I go back to the Borg, you're all safe. So that's that's how his mindset's working here. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Again, just but yeah, you're right. Totally right. The whole man crush. It's like he's got to protect his friend Jordy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 definitely you know the 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 needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. It's absolutely like, yeah, it is brought up a lot because it's like a Vulcan principle, but you see Hugh like really showing this here. And I I do love that when, when they beam down to the surface, Hugh says, I don't want to forget I'm Hugh. Like he really wants to hold on to his individuality and remember that he can choose for himself. And, um, yeah, this is such a Star Trek ending. It really is of like, I'm sacrificing myself for the good of the ship. And, you know, and he goes back to the board collective, of course. And yeah, but I, I, I will say that what I really, really do love is that at the very end, you know, Jordy and Hugh say their goodbyes. But then just as like the Borg show up and they're about to beam Hugh up, he looks over at Jordy. Yeah, I think he gives them that last look goodbye. Mm-hmm. And and that, of course, is very telling because we know that the Borg ignore everything around them and everybody around them if it doesn't suit their purpose at the yeah. moment. Yeah, we actually, the penultimate scene, we find out, you know, Doherty wants to go with Hugh and it's fine because basically they don't, they're not going to assimilate just one random person. <laughs> They would take on a civilization that's going to help them Mm -hmm. add to their knowledge, you know. So they're just going to ignore him. So, yeah, I mean, Jordy's just standing there, and they come walking by. It's like, oh, there's another rock. (laughs) Yeah. Treating him like Picard was treating you. I still think it's a bold move, because I've always just felt like, even though they go to the Borg ship, I've seen it a hundred times, they ignore him until they give him reason not to ignore him. Mm -hmm. But to send, you know, your chief engineer down there by himself with the Borg is still a bold, bold move. <laughs> it is. It, it really is. Like, what happens if the Borg decide to assimilate Jordy? Like, well, they Jordy do not. Be boyfriends. That's true. They could be. be Borg friends. But then the <laughs> Borg friends. But I then the Enterprise doesn't. <laughs> The, the Enterprise doesn't have a chief engineer and Data loses his BFF. I know. <laughs> I would be most sad for Data, actually. I know. Like, they're always a pair. That's why it's so great that they're Sherlock and Watson. Uh, anyway, that's the end of the episode. You guys have any more comments? about this particular episode or anything? I don't know, but when I get done with you, ladies, I, I definitely need to watch that That next time he appears. Uh, I can't remember what episode it is, but it's a two-parter 
and it's like it's with lore and data has feelings and but yeah i'm, I'm definitely gonna watch that when i get done with you ladies uh it is called uh, descent yes parts okay. one and two and spoilers we will be covering yep. that as well yep. as we get on to our road to picard so yeah definitely it's worth watching just because it's a great set of episodes but also um it's sort of a must watch to uh, get ready for picard mm -hmm. yeah so do you think they'll use how do you think they'll use hugh in the new picard series we're the ones who are supposed to ask the questions here no i'm <laughs> oh, sorry i'm asking the questions there buddy no um it's a good question. I mean, the last that we see of Hugh, and it's been a minute since I've seen Descent Parts 1 and 2. I'll, of course, I'll rewatch it before we cover it. But as I recall, Hugh uh, does survive those two episodes. So, I mean, obviously, he's, gonna, he's in Picard, so he's alive. But, like, um, I mean, I think Hugh is definitely... I think Hugh's running around still trying to, like... Um, maybe kind of make a case for any Borg that may have been separated because Vo certainly like Deep Space Nine, not Deep Space Nine, sorry, Voyager showed that there were other Borg that had separated from the collective. Um, I, I think there may be other Borg that have separated. There's been some um, speculation that the young woman that we see in the trailer is Hugh's daughter. Um, yeah, I've heard uh, that theory. It's Ooh. it's a fan it's a fan theory. It's right. nothing it's not of course from the showrunner, but right. like I mean, that's interesting if, now. if that's the case, I mean good for Hugh that he found somebody to have a kid with <laughs> and I'm glad all his parts still work. Like that's great for him. I like that instead of good for you, it's good for Hugh. <laughs> good for you. Like that to me would be interesting. I, I mean, I kind of hope that she is Hugh's daughter, but mm -hmm. e even if she's not, like, um, I think Hugh is the one who definitely sets her on the path to find Picard. Uh, because, you know, she's like, I, I, I don't... She says something in the trailer like, I know I can trust you. I feel like I can trust you. I think it's Hugh who sends her to Picard hmm. for whatever yeah. reason. But um, that's just my guess there. I, I don't know, like, what's going to actually happen. Yeah, I don't know yet either. I mean, I could see Hugh working closely with Seven... Oh, sure. Yeah. But uh, the other crazy theory that I I saw that I read was this uh, new girl could possibly be the child of the Borg Queen and Locutus. Oh, I've seen that, too. I, I think that's a bit out there. It is, but it's one of those fun ones. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. Like, at that point, you could even say, I mean, at that point, why not make her the child of of the Borg Queen and Data? I mean, oh, didn't yeah. they get it on? They got it on. So, like... Yeah. Why not? Like, <laughs> <sighs> so what? I, what we like to ask at the end is, um, what do you hope to see for this new Picard? Series? Oh boy, there's a lot, there's a lot you I want to see. Uh, or what I want to see. see or both. Okay, well, I, I want to see some of the characters return, which we know we're gonna get. We're gonna get B four, and they have already said like they're gonna possibly have uh, Riker and Troy. But there are a few characters I like. I want to see Guinan again, especially with the de aging technology they have now. They can make her look just like 1990s Whoopi Goldberg. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, have Picard go look for, talk to her for, in confidence. Um, I, and again, I'd really love to get a Q, a Q episode. Honestly, she doesn't look that much different. She's just heavier. I mean, she still doesn't have eyebrows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> but yeah, I, like I said, I also really like to get a Q episode just because th those two work so well together and their stories are always the best. Um, I don't know if there's anything I'm not looking forward to in this series. I, I'll, I'll take every episode you give me and I'll enjoy it. Yeah, like I, for me, like, I would love to see a Q episode I or even just an appearance. Like that would just crack me up. I would love it. I, I just don't want to see Picard turn into like, next generation 2.0 like I, I i don't need to see everybody come back like I, i've I, i've seen like fans online being like oh i hope they bring back jordy and i hope they bring back beverly and this one and that one and they and then like they even want uh, there are fans out there who are like oh i hope they incorporate characters from deep space nine and voyager and i'm like why like not for me i don't want to see that i i, I was I, you were gonna say wesley and then and I was uh, this face 
God, Wesley. Shut up, I'll Wesley. champion Wesley. I liked Wesley. You liked Wesley? I liked oh. Wesley. You might be, uh... I know yeah. one of those two fans. I know. I. He's there because of nepotism. <laughs> He's never been He's... an instant on yeah. that ship after... <laughs> It's not it, it's not Will Wheaton's fault. I felt like no. they never wrote his character great for me. Right. You know. Oh yeah, I understand that. I enjoyed watching Will Wheaton. The Wesley character at the time was was really stupid, especially there's like the one where uh, they get hypnotized by the game or whatever. Oh, it is. the game! Oh, that's one... uh, talk about such... cheesy. <laughs> or whenever Wesley left the show, that was a horrible write off. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go to Star Wars Academy now. Goodbye. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah, I mean, so I, some of the characters I, I would like to see come back, but maybe just for our episode. I don't need to have them there every single week. And I don't need I don't need Janeway. I don't need Jakote. I don't need Odo from DS9. I don't need those other characters. I just need to see a couple, a pinch here and there of just some of the next gen characters. You know, if anybody wants to see Odo, they should just pick some weird thing, some weird like piece of architecture and stuff, and just pretend like that's what he's morphed into. There you go. Great point. Just yeah. imagine that o- Odo could be in the entire series, and you'd never know it because he was a he, boss the whole yes. time. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a plant. Admiral's office or whatever, you know. You know, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the series. Uh, again, I've always been a Star Trek fan. Uh, to the point, my I have a 3D printer, and whenever I make something on my screen, there it says "Make it so." Mm, nice. So, yeah, when it was so when it when it starts, it uh, engages, and it makes says "Make it so." I like it. But yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to this series. I look forward to listening to you two talk about this series. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're thank quite you so welcome. Much. So, um, yeah, before we say goodbye, Mark, tell everybody where they can find more of you online and, and in the interwebs and on the podcast web. Uh, yeah, you can find our where our podcast is on most of the major uh, podcast platforms, iTunes, Google Play, you know, all those big ones. Um, you can find us on Facebook. It's called Nerdaholics. I think we're on Twitter as well. I think it's Nerdaholics123. Uh, but, yeah, you can go ahead and reach out to us, talk to us. We talk about TVs, movies, video games, D and D, you know your basic nerd stuff. Yeah, I've I've been on your show a couple times, which has been great, and um, I always enjoy talking to you and Lenny. So, yeah, I uh, d- guys check out Nerdaholics, and if you're a D and D fan, make sure you listen to the D and D episodes too um, to hear a live game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's always fun. Uh, we always love talking to new people, and we, whenever we get a guest on it, we always get super excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you don't have if, if you don't have anything else, we'll uh we'll bid you adieu. Mark. Well thank you, ladies. I mean I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Awesome. I, I said I look forward to listening to you and maybe talking to you again about some more Picard stuff. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for listening, everybody. Cardcast is hosted by Brooke and Rebecca. You can find us at facebook.com slash Picardcast, on twitter.com at the Picardcast, or email us at Picardcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and boldly go where no one has gone before.